just a mess right now. Well, your hair is always a mess. That's nothing. That's nothing Thanks. new there. Ba- basket it, folks. Bask in the glory that is Doug <laughs> looking like John Wade. <laughs> I'm Tex from De- See, it's interesting. Do you know Burt Reynolds? Of course I know Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Okay. So you just haven't seen that movie? No. Okay. Okay. Well, this is an original. Oh, they were talking uh, about Smokey, Smokey and the Bandit, folks at home. Original yeah. Smokey and the Bandit hat from Stetson. My mom got it for me when I was about, uh, I don't know, 13. Okay. Um, it's not something I wore around that often, obviously, for obvious reasons, <laughs> which I will not name. Um, but it was pretty cool um, because it's it, it actually is a <laughs> – I can't remember what she got it, but it, it is actually an original. I'll show you. If you look real close, you can see, and it might be. Wait, hold on. No, nope. I think you had right. no. You okay. had you had it right set up the first time. Oh, was it right there? No, 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 no. no. The oh, other this way. way? You know, yeah, you had it right that way. I'm just trying there to look is. in closely, like to read it. Hmm. It says smoking yeah, smoke in the panda. Yeah. And there's a tag right here that says Stetson on it, which is um, a pretty Very big. Cool. Uh... Find your mouthpiece and put on your jock strap. It's the Sports Blitz with Doug and Robbie. Okay, how long is your show? You guys have such a great setup. And listen, so. if you're uh, under a rock or if you're in a cave, come on out and listen to our episode. It was fun talking baseball. Yeah. I love talking Red Sox. I love talking coaching. I don't mean? care because I would rather there not be an MLB season than have to sit and watch the colossal embarrassment. Hey, hello. Hi, Bloom. Yeah. Yeah, it's Doug and Robbie from uh, the Sports Blitz. I just wanted to find out whether you need some pitching. There you go. In five, four, three. Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode number 106 of the Sports Blitz, and happy holidays to everybody out there, as always. I'm Robbie. Doug is here as well. You, he, I'm, he, I'm pointing up because he's above me on my screen here, so I know on his screen it's a little bit different uh but it is you beside me yeah so either up or so I'm, I'm i'm pointing somewhere because he's <laughs> he's somewhere somewhere out pointing there to the screen yeah but uh doug how are you tonight doing great robbie uh very excited about this episode and excited to talk about um holiday stuff a little holiday stuff and a little you know just just some different things we're, we're going to talk about tonight so very very excited about that absolutely absolutely this is a very exciting episode because this is our final episode not of forever don't worry panic don't panic people we're 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 gonna be back but this is our final episode for the year 2021 so we obviously wanted to make it a fun one and a special one and so uh we're gonna talk about a few different subjects that are sort of holiday and year of the end year year end related jeez can i year of the end year of the end it's it's the new movie the year Uh, of the end can't speak. Sorry, Robbie Johnson. Can't speak today, man. I'm telling you, it's uh, it's okay. not it's not good. But um, okay. before we get into the topics for tonight, though, Doug, for the final time in 2021, we gotta send a shout out to our amazing sponsor. So why don't you take it away there? Absolutely. So our amazing sponsor for 2021, and we just re-upped. <laughs> We the contract has, for, been signed, the the contract has been signed for 2022, the which cross, is great. You know, whatever, yeah. That's right. That's right. Contract has been signed for 2022. Uh, is Simon Organizing. As you can see, and just take a look behind Robbie, um, Robbie has uh, got um, uh, a room that is uh, an organizing, uh, organizational organizing dream. Yeah, it was a disaster. Uh, it was even more dream. of a disaster earlier, as Doug knows. I mean, I was a complete mess when I came on before yeah, the show. It was just, it's it just was, they, things are yeah. falling. And it's just not good. It's really not good. And, and it, yeah, and it's obvious that Robbie's feeling overwhelmed with his role. It's obvious. But what Simon organ or or I see I can't talk either. What Simon organized? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, you, you passed it on. <laughs> yeah, really. Simon organ organizing. Uh, Simon organizing can come in and make your room 
what you want it to be, not what the organizer wants it to be, but work with you to make it into a really, really nice place. It's organized. You know, Robbie organizes a soft drawer typically every Saturday. So you have to figure that there's at least one part of it that's organized, but assignment organizing can come in and help and to make, really to make uh, and create a great space for you to be in. And, and Robbie will walk in and go, ah, this is nice, including my sock drawer. So just remember, assignment organizing, creating a stress-free home. Thank you very much for all of your efforts this year. And we look forward to keeping up the partnership for 2022. You're absolutely right. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, Doug. Big, big thank you to Zyman Organizing for not only sponsoring this show, but sponsoring all of our other three or the other two shows on our uh, podcast trilogy here, that being Marvel at the Movies and On a Couch Talking Sports. Uh, Zyman Organizing is the proud and official sponsor of all three shows and we wouldn't have it any other way and as we head into a new year it is very exciting to know that Zion Organizing will be with us for many many months to uh to come here so thank you a big thank you as always to Zion Organizing so uh yeah just wanted to give a, a a nice shout out to them as we always do and so for tonight's episode Doug as we were talking about uh, earlier, we are going to be sort of saying goodbye in our own way to 2021 and sort of yeah. a hello to 2022. Oh, and also, again, just sort of talking about some some holiday-related entertainment items, as well, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But we want to start off um, the – well, we want to start off the episode, I should say, end of the year episode, is recapping – the year that was in our hometown Boston sports, because it has been an exciting year of Boston sports. A lot of stuff has gone on between all four, actually really five. If you count the revs who had a very successful 2021 season that just uh, wrapped up a couple weeks ago, uh, but just a lot of exciting stuff. So I guess Doug, I want to kind of start generally and sort of then work our way down into sort of each team here a little bit but uh, I guess when you think about in general Boston sports in the year 2021 just right off the top what are some some thoughts for you that that come to mind about the previous year uh in Boston sports I think I think what it comes down to is you know when I think of 2021 and I think of Boston sports um I think I think one one word kind of crept into my mind as you were kind of talking about it, and the word is unpredictable. <laughs> I mean that that's the only word that that really came to my mind when when we when when when, when you were you know doing your spiel and just and and starting to ask the the the, the question that you just asked. It is just the unpredictability of of sports today. What's going to happen? Um, just going into certain seasons, going and, and saying, "Wow, I don't know." For example, Patriots rookie quarterback. We don't know what's going to happen, and it's unpredictable. We, we there's no real predicting, although you can if you want. You can but try. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, you can try, but but it's it's so difficult because you don't know what's going to happen. Right. It's a rookie quarterback. If we still have Tom Brady, I guess our predictions would be a little <laughs> bit different. But that that's that's just what it is. Um the other thing, the other thing about Boston sports, the other thing the other, other than the unpredictability, and, and then you go into um you know the Boston Celtics and how they, you know, um, you know, Brad Stevens got all these players and what's gonna happen here, what's gonna happen there. Um, you know, the new players on the Bruins, how are they going to, you know, it, it's all on, and the Red Sox, same thing. How, how far are these guys going to go with Alex Cora back at the helm? So it's, it's, it's one of those things where that's the first word that comes to my head. The second, the second kind of 
thought that came to my mind is, you know, how is this all going to come together? And being unpredictable with COVID and seeing what happened, you know, we just had a COVID year last year. Is this, look, oh, here we go. First of the year, we start getting back. The vaccine comes out, we start getting vaccinated. Player, all the sports teams and bosses start getting vaccinated. Hey, we're starting to get better. We're starting to get better. And bang, unpredictable again. There we go. And, and COVID's back. Um, and and trying to figure out <laughs> if if we're going to have trying to figure out Robbie whether we're going to have NBA games on Saturday or not, um, or or NFL games for that matter. Um, and, and what's going to happen with the college, the, the college football too, because that's extremely important right now. Um, so it's around this time and it's very exciting around this time, college football. So it's, it's one of those things where I, I just, I just think it's, it's, it's been a, a, an absolute, the last year and a half, almost two years have been very, very unpredictable. And that's what I would kind of call it. That's the, the word that comes to mind. That's the thought that comes to my mind with sports because you never know what's going to happen week to week. Without COVID, that also happens. But with COVID, you don't know what team's going to play. You don't know which, which games are going to be canceled. You don't know. You, you like, you know, even my daughter said a couple of days ago, she asked me, she said, Dad, are we going back, backwards here? And And I had to tell her, you know, that we're not, we're not going backwards necessarily. It's not March of 2020. <laughs> no, no, it, it's not backwards. It's just a matter of getting control yeah. over what's yeah. happening. Absolutely. That's all it is. No, you're absolutely right. And, and it's very difficult to do that when there are other variants and stuff like that. And now they're trying to mess in sports to try, especially Boston sports all around, all over the country, all over the world, but all over the country. We're trying to figure out, is it a 10 day wait period? Uh, the NBA is negotiating, or NFL is negotiating to try to f figure out whether they get it down to five. I mean, where's where is that negotiation? You're either test positive or you don't test positive. So I don't understand why. I mean, is there a five day waiting period? Um, can everybody that tests positive with COVID can they all play together? Uh, because how are they going to get COVID? Because they all have it anyway. Um, as long as they're asymptomatic, are we going to be able to play? So that. Again, the unpredictability comes with, let's change the COVID rules now. Let's see how we can work around the COVID rules and talk to the doctors about, well, so how was this and how was that? And, oh, I'm vaccinated. Uh, it doesn't really matter. A lot, a lot of serious adapting and yeah, just there all is. these different there things is. going and, and, on. And yes. Going by the seat of the, the pants, too. I was going to say. I feel, like, they've, so I feel show, like that's the way they've done throughout the whole COVID time. It's just through, they've had it's to. Just basically just, you know, just sort of take it literally day by day, hour by hour <laughs> here. Yeah, and minute by minute. Just, things yeah. change on a time. Yeah. They totally, there was a day yeah. this week. I can't remember what it was. I was at work. I was listening. I was listening to NBA radio uh, on Sirius and on my phone. And all of a sudden, um, they break in with breaking news. Oh, two more NBA players go down with COVID. And then literally a half an hour later, two more players go down with COVID. Yeah. Unbelievable. I can't believe this. The kids, and then they have, and then they have a news break every hour. And the news break said those things, but they also said, oh, some more NFL players just got COVID. They're on now the COVID protocol. And this is, it's, it's like, it's like a never, the never ending storm. Mm -hmm. that just doesn't, doesn't yeah. seem to go away. It ain't going to go away. people. No. I'm no. sorry. It's not going to no. go away. We're just going to have to get in control of it. And we will. It's going to take a little time. Yeah. So when it comes to sports, they're kind of working on, What's going on? What's happening? How can we, how can we make this better for people? How can we be as normal as possible? And that's been what the unpredictability has been. So in, in your case, Robbie, what, what comes to mind when you think of the 2021 sports season, it doesn't matter what sport it is, maybe just Boston sports, but it could be college, anything. 
Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, first of all, I completely agree with literally everything you just said about, you know, the the unpredictability of this past year in sports. I will say that I am just so glad that unlike for several months there in 2020, we actually have sports to watch yeah. in general, <laughs> given where we were. You you want to talk Start about taping the games, people. Yeah, you want you want no, but you want no no, but you want to talk about like not going back to March. Of 2020, I don't think we're going to get back to that point where we have literally every single league shut down at the same time and just right. They're going to start nothingness. playing old games on NBA TV, yeah, start nothing this NHL yeah, Network. or trying to find any sort of sliver of sporting events, you know, whether it be uh, MMA or you know, random golf, random golf tournaments, rodeo, yeah, seriously. Korean, Korean baseball. I'm gonna have to go back to watching Korean, Korean baseball. Five thirty. You gotta watch morning. it at three a.m., dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, so I completely agree that this year has been very unpredictable. But I think in terms of the sports side of it in general, the word I actually would use would be um, exciting in terms of Boston, in terms, especially in terms of you know the local Boston teams because it will get into sort of them each individually here in the moment is that you had you know the Red Sox go on a very exciting playoff run you had the Bruins go on an exciting playoff run you had the Celtics you know battling you know that entire season even though frust- frustration may have been a better word or frustrating may have been a better word to describe the 2020-21 Celtics especially you know towards the end of last season uh you know there there was still a lot of excitement watching that team play you know watching them get into the playoffs and you know obviously they lost to uh Brooklyn but you know there's still there was still excitement there there was the excitement of having fans back in the stands and seeing you know the the excitement at Fedway or at the garden or wherever you know just sort of take hold um you know college sports you know college football being back with fans in the stands you know me like I'm a big BC fan you know my dad and I have had season tickets for years we were actually able to go two home games this season, even though, you know, they struggled a little bit, had a bit of an up and down year, just to be back in that environment and see the, you know, the full crowds and just, you know, hear the noise and the the excitement, the entertainment that you've become accustomed to, you know, just that, that made it all worth it, win or lose. I think it made me come to appreciate more being at a sporting event and not to focus as much about the winning or losing, but just to focus on the being at the event itself and the atmosphere and just the, the pure excitement of watching sports live and in person, because, you know, for almost a year, basically, we did not get that. Um, and so, you know, I think that it is very, it, it was a very, very exciting year in sports. You're absolutely right, though, about it being very unpredictable but uh, yeah, I mean, there was just a lot of excitement that took place. And you, you know me, Doug, I'm a big baseball guy. And the Boston Red Sox 2021, it's a perfect segue. The Boston Red Sox 2021 season was a very, very exciting season, to say the least. I mean, for all the ups and downs, and that, just that amazing playoff run that that we saw that team back in October Please. and it, it really all started back at the beginning of 2021 with the hiring or rehiring I guess you could call it of Alex Cora who after you know that one year hiatus made his triumphant return to the Red Sox dugout and made you know, sort of brought the Red Sox after a couple of very down years back to baseball relevance again. And so I kind of wanted to ask you, Doug, when you look back at the 2021 Red Sox, I know we've talked about this on earlier episodes, but when you really stop and look back at what the 2021 Red Sox season was, where do you sort of attribute that change in in sort of culture, change in excitement, you know, change in success, really, because, again, they made the playoffs and went deep into the playoffs this year. How much of it is Alex Cora, or how much of it was, you know, the players that, you know, they had on the – I mean, what, what do you sort of attribute 
what we saw out of the 2020 Red, Red, 2021 Red Sox too. Yeah, I, I, I kind of attribute it. I think a lot of it, I think probably 60, 70% of it was Alex Gordon. Um, and you, you could tell pretty quickly because he knows how to motivate his players. The players love playing for him. I think they love the fact that he says it like it is. Uh, he doesn't beat around the bush. Um, he, he, he's, he's able to teach, but he's able to hire lots of different, you know, his guys. He's able to hire his guys to be able to, to, to be able to do what they need to do to get 92 wins like they just did. Um, so it's, you know, I, I think a lot of it is Alex Cora. I think some of it is obviously uh, the motivation of the team. I think that, you know, there's no manager sleeping in the dugout. Um, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just, it just seemed to me, even right off the bat, even if they were losing games, they seemed to be really excited about it. Uh, not about losing, but excited about being out there, excited about Alex Cora coming back, excited about the season. So it was a different different attitude, different attitude, different aura around the team. I think that's half the battle, more than half the battle, is getting everybody to get on board. And once you do that, you seem to play together. It, it happened with the Patriots too. Same exact thing this year. So, you know, a, a new players, new players lost the first few games and were like, oh God, what kind of season this is going to be? <laughs> and, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, what happens? They start to believe in Mac. They start to get together as a team. They start to believe all together in each other and what they can do. And, and 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 look what happens. Um, so I I just think that that's that's a huge part of you know the Red Sox. I think it's a huge part of of how they turned it around. Yeah. Uh, do, do I think obviously the players on the on the field you know, where the players on the field a huge part of it. Obviously they actually paid for it, play the game. So it totally makes sense. But I think that having a motivator, having someone that believes in them, believing in themselves and believing in the team. And even if you lose, you know, let's get them, you know, we got another game tomorrow, let's kick their ass tomorrow kind of situation, kind of mindset. The mindset is we can win. And that's that's what I think. Yeah. Um, would love to know what your thoughts are because you're, of course, the baseball guru. <laughs> so just trying to figure out what, what you know, what you're – I think I know, but I just yeah. don't know what your thoughts were no. on what you thought about the Red Sox season. I mean, listen, I think you were right on with your analysis just there. I think it was largely in part to the the Alex Cora effect, as I'll call it, and you know him coming back and the fact that the players just really respect and trust him as a manager and really just seem to go out and play play hard for him just you know a little give that a little bit of extra effort for him for whatever the reason may be he just seems to connect well with those guys and always has and we we've seen it in the first couple of years that he was here and now obviously him being back um he just has that way of just turning this ball club you know into a contender and we saw it you know we saw it this year i mean there was i know they kind of had some struggles down the second, you know, sort of down the home stretch heading into the playoffs. But for a long while, the season, the Red Sox were, you know, the, the top team at all baseball uh, record wise and really playing top level baseball. And even, I mean, Hey, listen, you know, if nothing else this season, the Red Sox gave us just the, the most excitement we even needed by beating the Yankees in that wild card game. I mean, that was just, that was just, I mean, you know, if, if they had, if that had been the only playoff game that they had won, I would have, <laughs> I would have gladly taken, knock it out the, knock it out the eggs like they did in the, uh, in the wild card game. That was just epic. I, I was so excited. The fact that I got to, that I got to be there 
and witness and witness them tee off on Garrett Cole and just uh, you know have a have a grand old time. But and then to go and beat Tampa, who nobody saw it coming. I don't even know if I saw it coming. Uh, and then obviously you know they, they even just give Houston a run like they did. Really be in a position where you actually one pitcher bounce, you know a different way and you could have easily won that series as well. So, I mean, you know, it was just a, uh, it was just a very exciting time to be a Red Sox fan. And, you know, even though, you know, we, you know, we can freely admit that Alex Corum had made some poor decisions in the past, you know, especially in Houston. And, you know, I think he's taken responsibility for that has paid his paid his punishment. And, uh, you know, hopefully he's learned from his mistake, you know, time will tell, but to have him back and to have this Red Sox team be back in contention after two years of just very disappointing baseball uh, was just, was just so much fun to watch. And I, I'm, I'm very excited to see what 2022 brings because I think that this team, you know, can, can get even better, can only get better uh you know come come the coming year so uh i'm you know i'm very excited to see what the 2022 installment of red sox baseball will be if big caveat if uh there actually is an mlb season in 2022 and i really hope that you know the owners and players can sort of get off their asses and figure it out so that there will be uh but that's a wrap for a different day but um yeah it's just uh yeah i mean just to go back to that word i used earlier and it bears repeating excitement uh and that's what this 2021 red Sox season was doug in in a nutshell i mean that's basically the the word the word of the year when it comes to the boston red Sox, as far as i'm concerned yeah no i totally i again i i i, I agree with that uh, in full, and I, and I do think that that Alex Cora had something to do with it, and um, you know I think that's you know that's a first line right there. I mean it's the you know the players go out and play, but you know the the manager sometimes sometimes sets the tone, and I think he set a, a really good tone for for the year. I think they were excited about it. Uh, they don't have to wake up their manager in the dugout, so that's always a good thing. Um, and you know, I, I think that's um, you know that's half the battle right there, more than half the battle. So, yeah. okay, I think, but I think, I think Ron, we better be careful. Ron Renicky may come after us with a uh, with a defamation laws if we keep referencing him falling asleep in the dugout. Uh, wait, hold on. Wait, actually, hold I, on a second. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hello. Wait, is it Ron? Oh, oh, hi, Ron. Listen, that wasn't me. That was Doug. So you can direct your your hate letters and, and emails to. Uh, to Doug, um, I, yep. I say personally, I don't. I don't think you were falling asleep. Though. I have, like, I know. have, I have, I have video proof. So Doug says he has video proof. But I, I don't think you were. <laughs> I think, I think you're, you're. You was good. I, You're good. Really? I, I, I hope you, uh, I hope you do well in in retirement or whatever you're doing. Okay, bye. Uh, Ron Renicky, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, um, Excellent. Yeah. So, so it's it's always good to get a. a a, uh, a hands-on view of um, of really uh, what we're talking about, <laughs> but uh, I, mean, I of course did not mean sleeping as in literally. I meant sleeping as in what are you doing? <laughs> honestly, honestly, with that that's, man, that's no, what I was. Honestly, that's what honestly, I meant. With that man, nothing would surprise me if he actually no, was physically sleeping in the dugout. Don't even know. I don't really have video proof. All I know is it's like, like what's going on. We should, we should ask happening. Matt Nude. We should ask Matt Nude if uh, if Rod, good old Rod. Yeah, we we have to have Matt Nude on in 2022 to find out what's going really on. Do. Yeah, <laughs> but what actually Go went Rod, on? With Rod yeah, what actually went on with Rod Radicke. Yeah, we got to yeah, ask yeah. him the hard questions. So I know, you know, yeah, we gotta, seriously, you know, we yeah, gotta gotta prepare gotta, him. Boom, we're gonna, boom, you know, boom. Yeah, seriously. Gotta, He's got to give us Matt, the, if you're, Matt, the if you're watching this run, um, <laughs> uh, give us the uh, the dirt. But uh, you know it's interesting, Doug, because uh, you know I see you obviously wearing your uh, your Bruins cap there. You know the good old the good old B, the gold spoke B there, and um, 
you know, I, I've been thinking a lot, obviously, you know, the Bruins, you know, right now, big kind of deal with some COVID issues have been shut down for a while, but I was really, when we were talking earlier about, you know, the excitement of fans being back in the stands, you know, sort of into the spring and, and summer, especially of 2021, that was one of the teams that I really thought of because I thought back to like those first couple of games at the full capacity garden when the bees were playing the, uh, the Islanders in the playoff series last year. And just the amount of emotion and noise and intensity that you heard inside the TD garden just really made you realize that, you know, fan, fans are back. And it was a very, something that was just very exciting to see again, going back to that word excitement. It was very, very exciting to see, uh, you know, the Bruins again, make a, a pretty deep playoff run. I know, I know that, you know, it came to an earlier exit, that I think a lot of people had hoped. And again, we can get into that in just a minute here. But um, I just wanted to get to your thoughts on the 2020, well, I guess, what well, was through the 2020-21 Bruins season as a whole, but especially, you know, the fact that this Bruins team, you know, I mean, they did make it to the second round of the playoffs and, you know, put up a pretty good fight there again, you know, you know, I guess the Islanders, although again, team arguably they probably should have beaten in that series. But again, just wanted to get get your thoughts on uh on the Bruins team this season as uh, as we look back at at the year as you and your hat there look back at the year that was uh for the good old black and gold. Yeah, it was I I, I guess I, I guess the only you know I, I bringing up words the first word that comes to mind is disappointing i guess is disappointing um you know i think every year you think that and, and they do every year you you always think that bruins always have a chance first of all you, they always have a chance to make playoffs they always have a chance to make first second round they just can't seem to get over that that hurdle that they have that one game that they have that two you know two games they have something that stops them and i know this year has been incredibly challenging especially in the nhl it's been very challenging yes. with uh covid yeah. um canceling games and, and all kinds of stuff and of course taking a pause for the season which is interesting because no other team is doing that but taking a pause until you know, at least until next week, I think, or maybe yeah, even after 20, that. Yeah, uh, I think the the first day they can come back is the twenty seventh. Yeah, so that's uh, Monday. So yeah, yeah, it's Monday. So it's, I think it's been very difficult. I think there's been some injuries, but I think COVID's really kind of taken over the NHL. So I think this year has been difficult. But even, you know, I mean, even last year it was. It, it was it was just tough to know that you could beat the Islanders and like it's just like what what's going on? Why can't these guys just get over the hump? You know, get over that hurdle. What, what's wrong? And it's obvious. It it's obvious and it's not obvious. Some of it, I think, has to do with the not even the team unity, um, but it has to do with. Who are they playing? Not who are they playing the other team? Who are they playing? Who are the what what groups are getting together? What lines are getting together is what I meant to say. Yeah. Uh well, what lines are getting together? I think that's something that Bruce Cassidy is kind of working around. The last thing I heard, and I haven't watched it, I've watched some games, but I've taped some others and then watched them later. Last thing I heard was is that Bergeron got upset and yelled at Bruce Cassidy for calling out Brad Mercer. So it's trying to figure out is there a disconnect between Bruce Cassidy and and the Bruins this year and what's going on? Now Andrew Raycroft said this morning he was on Sports Radio on on WEI. Thank you, shameless plug. 
Um, and he had said that Cam Neely, Sweeney, and Bruce Cassidy, their jobs are fine. And the reason that their jobs are fine is because they make it to the playoffs every year. So, you know, and they had, they did last year. So, you know, typically you get, you get ousted um, if, if you're, if you're really bad. Yeah. Uh, Ron Renneke. Um, so um, I think. I Wait, think hold best... on, hold on. No. <laughs> Wait, he's calling again? This Whoa. isn't even uh, live. Hi, hi, Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Ron. How does he know what we're Ron, saying? Ron, 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 how are you, Ron, how are you knowing this if we're not actually like, oh, you're patched into the network? Oh, patched I into see. the network. Oh, Excellent. That's pretty, that's pretty, for someone your age, Ron, that's pretty technical. Yeah, that's, that's pretty savvy. Pretty, uh, pretty, uh, I'm not quite, not, savvy not quite sure if you believe, if I believe you uh, are actually doing that. Actually, I'm not even sure if this is a real phone call that's taking place. Oh, oh. Wait, oh, it wasn't wait, a real it, it phone call. Real oh, phone I'm just going to put That's the right. phone down and let That's you continue right. talking. Excellent. So I, I, I think I, I think there's some frustration this year. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. I mean, there's yeah. some frustration. Um, guys getting hurt. I think there's two or three guys that are two guys that are one guy out. Zaboro's out, I think, for the whole year. Yes, I saw um, that. Yeah. Yeah, the world's off of the year, which is a huge loss. He is, he's been a very, very good player for them for at least a good, I don't know, year and a half or so, yeah. two years. So it's, uh, that's, that's a huge loss right there. But I think there's some frustration. I think not, I don't think it's just COVID. I mean, it's Tuka coming back. I mean, yeah. And if Tuka comes Krejci, back. Krejci leaving? I mean, it's yeah, just it's like, Tuka, yeah. It's Krejci coming back, too. Now he says he's not because now he's playing. He had a chance to come back. He had that window to come back if he didn't play for them uh, overseas. If he didn't play for them, then they had a chance to get him back. Nope. Yeah. But why would you want a Krejci back? you got other players that, that have Younger to step up. Players, this, is, yeah. uh, this is the <clears> – <throat> Robbie, this is the natural progression. You have the rookies that come in. You got to get the rookies playing. You got to get them going. Brad Marchand being one of them started out in Providence, worked his way up, and now look what he's doing. Um, Pasta, same thing. Homegrown. So it's Pasta has been disappointing this year. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he just he just hasn't been yeah. as consistent. I don't think he has in past years. I don't think anybody's played well. No, 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 I know, no, I know. I'm just saying he, him in particular sort of stood, has sort of stood yes. out to me that he has not been producing at the level that we are no. accustomed to seeing. That's all right. I was saying. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. With no, you. no, absolutely. And, and, and again, I agree with that. Uh, but I don't think anybody's playing well. I really don't. Yeah. <clears throat> I think they have to get together as a team and fi- figure out. You know, when they get back on the ice, they got to figure it out. Yeah, because yeah, really nobody's do. playing well, and and it's and it's kind of harsh to see. Last year was a different story. They were playing well, especially toward the end of the season, um, and and through the playoffs, they were. Well, can I, I can ask you a question about that because uh, yeah. thought popped into my mind. How much of what happened last season? I suppose this season, maybe it's not even maybe there's not even a correlation, but I'm I'm curious. You know, obviously last year in terms of the scheduling, they were only playing teams within their division. So basically, they were only playing teams within that yeah. that uh, I forget it was they the Easter the, purpose, the yeah. East or the Atlantic Division, whatever it was called last year. Basically, you know, they they were playing the same teams over and over again. You know, basically through the through the first two rounds of the playoffs as well. And so you got that familiarity there. Whereas this year, obviously they're back to play, you know, the teams from Canada, the teams from, um, you know, from the West coast, you know, central, basically all over back to sort of the normal, the normal schedule. So I wonder just in your mind, how much in terms of last year, this year or whatever, if there was any sort of, factor there with them last year playing you know basically the same opponents all the way through as opposed to this year where now it's a bit more of a normal wide-ranging schedule yeah i i i think that i think i personally think that that's a factor my opinion is i think it is a factor because they were playing 
<laughs> how many how times, times play, uh, should how we times say, oh, God, the Rangers again? The Islanders <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, Flyers yeah. I mean, again. Like, same people over and over again. And oh, actually, here come those Penguins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my, my, my wife loves hockey, too. Hockey guru, of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, but, guru. but she actually was getting tired of seeing the same teams over and over again. Oh, not Philly again. Uh, um, two twice in a row. Two, like you have two games in a row against the same team. Yeah, it's same like, team. Uh, yeah, it's it, it was. I I think that I think that was a big factor because now they're playing other teams. Now they're not playing the same team over and over and over again. So that and it's not something that they typically do. So I I think and and I think they made it work last year. To tell you the truth, Robbie. I haven't seen enough to know what's going on this year at all. I was surprised. That, I mean, what, Bergeron's getting upset. Yeah, Bergeron, Bergeron never is, gets upset with people. Bergeron never gets upset. Especially the head coach. Yeah, that, that was shocking never. to me as well. I know. Never. He's he the captain. He just doesn't do it. He's like this the whole time. He's, He's the been, captain. Ever since I've seen him. Yeah. So there, there's something going on there that's underlying that we don't know. Mm -hmm. And this is a good chance right now, while they're on this little pause, to be able to get it together. Do some soul searching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty get much. Get it together. Yeah. No, no, no more infighting, because when there's infighting, no, nobody, it just doesn't, it just doesn't go well. Yeah. It well, just doesn't. No, uh, history really, has proven that if you really, have infighting, uh, it, it's just not a good situation. Well, ever. it's it's funny you bring that up because and you're, you're absolutely right. I agree with you completely. But speaking of infighting, let's talk about the Celtics a little bit because I know they've had some issues of infighting over the the last year and some of the struggles that they've had. You know, sort of towards the end of last season where they kind of fell off, and then you know into this year where they've been inconsistent. I know they again they've had their own sort of injury and COVID issues as well. But I mean, you're, you're the basketball guy of our, of our show. You're the basketball guru. Uh, I mean, just what, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on this past year of the Celtics? Cause it's been like, it, it, there, there's just been a lot to digest. I feel like more than any of the other teams when it's come to this Celtics team over the past year. So just, uh, I'm very curious to hear your, Thoughts on this on the look back at the uh the seas here in 2021. Yeah, I uh <laughs> I I I'm at I'm at a little bit of a loss for this year. Um trying to figure out where they're at. Yeah. They're, they're basically basically a 500 team right now. Yeah. And that's how they're playing. Yeah. They're playing like a 500 team. If they keep playing the way they're playing, they're not going to go anywhere. Now, it's be just like last year, all over again. Correct. Now the the trade deadline is a, is is in mid February, so I think it's about a month and a half away. So, if it's some rumors out there, and I'm not going to talk about rumors right now because we're doing an end of the year show, and we can get to that. You yeah. know, when you know after the we can get to that next year. year. <laughs> yeah, we get to that next year, which is in you know, a couple. Of years. So it's. It's it's really just trying to figure out what was going on last year, and some of it was coaching. Some of it was that Tatum and Brown think that they need to each get forty points and and win games for everybody. And and you know that doesn't work in today's NBA. It just doesn't. You do have guys that go out and score a lot of points. But, you know, Steph Curry being one of them, you have to kind of figure that Golden State's a really good team. Um, but you also have to figure that he also passes the ball. So it's, it, I guess it's one of those things where they're trying to, I think this is, uh, uh, you know, Brad Stevens moves up to Danny Ainge's position. Danny Ainge goes out to Utah. So it's it's, it's I, I guess the reason I'm lost for words is because I have no idea what the heck's going on. I don't. I just yeah. don't. Right. <clears throat> you watch a play and and you watch a last game, for instance. 
the, the last like what two or three games they've actually put a codicil in for COVID because they've uh, um, Enos Cantor Freedom uh, yeah, just, he just went out protocols today. today. Just yeah. went into protocols yeah. today. So the NBA decided. But they brought back they Joe were... Johnson. They brought I did back that. Joe I Johnson. Did that, 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 uh, I got I got something later for that. Okay, okay, okay. So right. uh, that was I'll... part of my that was part sorry. Of my okay, sorry. No, no, sorry, it's okay. You... But 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 you're right. You're right. That they, they, they no. What, yeah, I, the codicil was is talking. that because players are players are 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 falling. Left and right. All around the left and wait, right. wait, hold on. Oh, hold on. Two more players just fell down. Oh, man. Yeah, see? See, there you go. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm no, just... of course not. Uh, but what the, me? The, they put into the, to keep playing, they put into this thing where, okay, well, if there's more than just a couple players that go down, you've got seven players on your team that go down. We need to get more players on there so we can keep playing games. Right. So teams are able to pick up free agents and or people that are kind of out there. It could be somebody that's playing for the G League. It could, some of these players, never heard of in my life. <laughs> um, some I have. Um, so it's – it's just it, it's it's been kind of a wild ride, but you have Cleveland, who actually has a very very good team now, um, and you have the Celtics playing their last game against Cleveland at home, and and all of a sudden they they beat they, they beat one of the best teams in the East right now, but the, the next game they could go and they could just they could just Lane absolutely yeah. suck yeah so. The word here that we're doing words is consistency. They have no consistency. They're consistently inconsistent is what they are. Yes. And that's been our that's been our word for 2021. Is that, is two words. God, how many times have the, all the teams have we mentioned that word yes. consistency? Yeah, I know you're you're it really is our word of the year. It's uh horrid. It's it's yeah, it, it's absolutely yeah. terrible. Yeah. No, it, and and, right. and the fact is, is that there's no, there doesn't seem to be any cohesion. Jason Tatum's trying to change his his game. Jalen Brown hurt again, not hurt again, hurt again. Oh wait a minute, not hurt again. So and and just the inconsistent play of everybody there. Dennis Schroeder having a great game, and then next game he's sucking wind. Uh, Josh Richardson has actually been playing very well as of late. If he could stay on the court, he keeps like yeah, yeah, having some exactly. issues of his own. No, yeah, exactly. So, but but again, I think that's what it is. Is just the inconsistency. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, I can't think of anything yeah. else. No, you're right. If the Boston one game, Celtics... one game they're playing like a playoff team, and the next game they're like what? If the Boston yep. Celtics of the year 2021 could be defined in one word, it is truly inconsistency. Yes. That's that's what we have yep. seen the whole year from the end of last season into this season uh, has just been a, a, a now, barrel full now, of inconsistency. Yeah. Now, now, the other part of it is, is that, again, the trade deadline comes up in a month and a half. Rumors out there. The rumors are just rumors. Yeah. Always. Talk to Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge will tell you. 99.9% of the rumors are crap on a stick. It's their agents just throwing stuff out there. Yeah. I sometimes don't, I don't sometimes, sometimes they're kind of like, days. oh, well, that, that came true. That was a rumor. That came true. Most of the time they're not. Been a lot of rumors out there. But one thing I like about Brad Stevens, and he already proved it. Yeah. Not, a, not afraid to trade players. No. Not afraid not to afraid get rid should of players. pull the trigger. On these deals, you're absolutely right. Not afraid to pull the trigger. Oh, wait a minute, Kemba Walker. Ooh, yep. Talk about Kemba Walker and the fact that he was benched in New York. And that takes a lot. He's for been you playing to be, that, lately. You know that, why he's that, been playing lately? That takes a lot for you to be benched with the next. He's been, he's been playing in the last two, I think, three games. You know why? COVID. Yeah, the Knicks don't have anybody. There's, there's they, don't have players. they don't have guards. Yeah. So they put Kemba Walker out there. Can I just we're, say, we're, can I just say one thing? Yeah. 
Um, Tom Thibodeau is just like, well, what's going on? Here? Well, Kemba Walker is having himself a night tonight. I just got a little uh, ESPN pop up notification that the Knicks, are, the Knicks are leading 64 57 at halftime against the good old Washington Wizards. And Kemba Walker in that first half has 28 points to lead all scores. Wow. Oh. Well, he's, he's just proven he needs to be on the court and not off the court. That's all that is. Go. There you go. Kemba he's going himself out proving nice himself, night. which he needs to do, which makes sense. But it, it's just – so, so we'll – I guess I'm leaving judgment yeah. to see what happens the next month and a half. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Absolutely. But but yeah. last year, last year's team a, was an absolute a lot train wreck. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hopefully, and hopefully the 2022 part of the Celtics season will be a lot better, a lot more consistent than we have been right. seeing in 2021. Right. That's for but, sure. But I think it's good because, again, Jason Tatum trying to change his game. We've got a new coach. Relatively, May. you know, it seems to be, um, you know, gelling with, with his players. Yeah. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what happens, but that's kind of what, how I feel about that. No, you're absolutely right. Um, I did want to move on to the sort of the final really uh, team here that we're going to talk about for, in terms of the Boston sports team for the last year. That is the Patriots. And what a year it has been in 2021 for the Patriots. Basically, we started off last year basically seriously. So it's interesting because we started off last year thinking that Cam wasn't going to come back and then we were going to have a new quarterback. Then they re-signed Cam and everybody's saying that Cam's going to be the starting quarterback to start the 2021 season. Then come basically a week before the season starts, oh, Cam gets released and Mac Jones is starting quarterback. Then the Patriots start out 1-3. Everybody's like, oh, it's going to be another season like it was last year. Then they go on a seven-game winning streak. Seven game, or Sorry, they started out 2-4. and four even right and everybody yes. yeah it's, then they go on a seven game winning streak now all of a sudden i know they lost the Colts on saturday all of a sudden they're in the driver's seat in the afc east they're within striking distance of having the top seed of the entire afc i mean just what a what a year it has been for the you are talking about savings for the best for last i think we can call it saving the wildest for last in terms of the past year in Boston sports, because you want to just talk about what a, a a turnaround this Patriots team has been from where they were at the start of 2021, coming off a very disappointing 2020. They have all the, the drama at their quarterback situation, you know, in the preseason. They have a tough start to the year. Now, all of a sudden, you know, they try and they look like the best team in football the last seven of the last eight weeks. So it's like it, it's just been it's been amazing. It's been amazing to watch this 2021 Patriots team because they've actually brought back some excitement to watching Patriots football. Unlike last year, again, you said we're exciting for the Red Sox earlier. This Patriots team also has been exciting. You know, they've been, even the games that they've lost, they've been in those games. There, there have been a couple of their losses that they probably should have won. And now you look at this team entering the final three weeks of the regular season. You say this team, first of all, has a great shot at making the playoffs. But second of all, they have a great shot at winning the division and possibly even being the top seed in the AFC. Who saw that coming at the beginning of the season? Or you know, when we rang in the bell in 2021 after they had finished, what, 7-9 and nine last season with just a team basically in disarray with Cam Newton as the starting quarterback and no, no – end in sight everybody thought the buffalo bills were going to just take over the afc east but guess what the pats are back and it's been an awesome transformation to watch and probably one of the more exciting transformations of a team in the past year doug and i'm just i'm i'm loving it it's it's exciting to watch their exciting team to watch yeah they could be frustrating at times absolutely they gave saturday night very very frustrating to watch especially the first half first three quarters there, then they make it exciting. Then of course, you know, they get the long touchdown run to end up losing the game. Um, but yeah, it's been a, it's been quite a turnaround year for the Patriots. And uh, yeah, there's still a, 
a long way to go here. Again, it's just still three weeks remaining in the regular season. Doug in a big game coming up Sunday against Buffalo, basically first place in the AFC and the possibly the AFC East title online because the Pats win. And I think if Miami loses, then the Pats clinch the AFC East title, which would be amazing given where we were at the start of this season. So yeah, I, I want to sort of ask your thoughts, Doug, on this uh, 2021 Pat season. Because again, I mean, I use the word exciting. I'm sure there's a lot of words that people could use to describe the turnaround that this this team has had. So uh, what are what are your thoughts? Uh, before I get to my thoughts, um, I just want to tell you that there is uh, two words. It's called breaking news. Beep, beep, um, beep, beep, beep. Two, two, two more. And we were absolutely right, actually. Oh, no. uh, two more NBA players have actually, maybe this was us. Two more NBA players have actually gone into uh, COVID-19 protocols. It is uh, Carl Anthony Towns. Oh, yeah, I the, saw that. I saw that pre-episode. Yeah, and Bradley Beal. Yep, I is saw now that. into COVID nineteen because he was he's playing. Obviously, the Wizards are playing uh, New York. I think tonight. Uh, so two more, two more down and dirty. So what what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. Anyway, um, it might have been us to do that, but I'm not sure because we said there were two. Um. I, I just have, I, I, I you know, t- we're, we're talking about, you know, Boston sports, and then we're talking about words. Um, <laughs> I am, I'm a loss for words at, at, at the absolute turnaround of what the, this Patriots team has, has done this year. Last year, train wreck. Ugh. Absolute train wreck. Aren't you glad you fans I, you were allowed to go to games, like home games for last year's Pats team? That would have you, been you so and depressing. I, yeah, you you and I couldn't stand talking about them because there was there was no. so much negative yeah. negativity. Uh, the negativity in this town sucks. Well, um, last year was warranted for the Patriots. Right. Okay, so Tom Brady's not walking through that door. Not Tom Brady was walking through that door. Yeah, um, so this year, Julian Edelman's not walking. Julian through Edelman's that door not walking through that door. And, you know. So, uh, you know, they're gonna be, they're gonna be grand old, but Brady's so is Gronk. So neither is Gronk. Gronk, Gronk isn't either, but he's playing. So, but um, I, I think, I think just one word that came to my mind as you were describing all this, the one word I can, I can think of is just incredible. Just like where, where, where did this, like, where did this come from? Yeah. Um it, it's so much fun to watch. So much fun to see this particular rookie quarterback morph himself into rookie versus this guy is is just you know, I mean he's not the second coming yet. He's still a rookie, but the way he has played the experts, which are past players, have said, and his own team believes in him. Not just believes in him, but has said that he reacts not like a rookie. Bill hit it right in the nose with this guy. Um, I didn't. I didn't. I you know go, going through the draft, and we we had a draft show. Remember. Um, going through the draft, I was like, okay, we just, we just totally missed out on that guy. We missed out on that guy. We missed out. Oh, we're taking, wait a minute. We're taking who? Oh, okay. Well, he won a national championship. He can't be that bad. Although, wait a minute. It's Alabama. So, um, it's good like, old, good old Nick it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like, it's like almost a given, but Bill, again, Again, Bill shines and makes another another great decision on 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 a future quarterback, which, which I think is is great. It's it, it, it it's kind of crazy though that you you think a rookie quarterback you have one one thing and you have another. You have you have a couple lost games. And you're like, okay, well he's a rookie. He's a rookie. 
then he, he wins a couple of games. Oh, well, makes sense, makes sense. Maybe, uh, maybe he'll win some, maybe he'll lose some. Maybe we'll end up with a winning record, but we won't go to the playoffs. And that's okay because it's a rookie season and we get it and there's new players. And but all of a sudden, it's like gel time. It's like they've been playing like for 25 years. Yeah. It's unbelievable how these guys, Matt Judon just absolutely described as one of the best pass rushers in the league. He has absolutely proven that this year. Oh, he's great amazing. pickup for he's Bill. I mean, you know, Bill looks like a genius. He doesn't just look like it. He is. And it makes sense. Did spend I don't know 110 120 million dollars. Oh God! I don't, you want to talk about 2021? I mean, just the NFL free agency. Yeah, 2021. Just, what the Patriots did making that splash the way they yeah, it's, it's paid dividends for them. I mean, you look at Judon, like you said. You look at Hunter Henry's performance has been fantastic. You, I mean, I know John Smith's been a bit banged up at times, so it's been kind of hard to gauge his play. Yeah, he is but, it, He is it, Well, when he's out there, he hasn't played well, but. Again, he's done some some pretty good yeah, other things like blocking moments. and he's some other moments. stuff. He's had his moments, but they have they've been few far between. But I mean, and how about J.C. Jackson with the departure of Stephon Gilmore? I mean, J.C. Yeah. Jackson just he looks Stepping like up. you know a, a you know a top corner in the game this season with the way he's yeah. been playing. It's been amazing. Yeah, and just just adding these players. I mean, it's it's just incredible how and and. And Bill also did this unconventionally because typically he doesn't do it. He did this so early. He was just like, bang, bang, yeah. bang, yeah. bang. I mean, he just kept going down the line. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And, and that was it. You know, he just, um, it was just incredible how we got all these players and he got them like really, really early. <laughs> um, and and we, we were all like stunned because he never did this. He never does this. It's obvious that he wants to prove something. Yeah. Um, it's obvious that he wants to prove that he can, he can win without Brady. Yeah. And, and, and it makes sense. It makes sense. Well, right now, right and, now he you is. Know what? You know what? It, 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 it was a great run. We loved the last 20 years. It has been awesome. And it's been great. But it's time. It was time. We knew we were going to have to move on from Brady at some point. Yes. We knew eventually. we were going to have to move on from him at some point. So I mean, I guess if you want, no, if you know, definitely, if you want to look at it that way, I mean, you know, you you knew you were going to have to start the post Brady era at some point. Now we are, and now we have a kid in there who, a guy in there, Mac Jones, who is just, you know, right now tearing it up. Yeah, tearing it up. Tearing and it I, up. And I, I really, but, just, but he does I, show. I, I, but but you have to, yeah, you have to admit he he did show a little rookie ism in the last of quarters. Game. Of course. Throwing passes no. he shouldn't have thrown and stuff of like course. that. He's but, made mistakes, <laughs> but he, he I feel yes. like he's learned from those mistakes as he's gone early in the season. He made mistakes yes. in those early games, but he learned from it and he adapted. And so I think that that's, a, that's the hallmark of the potential for a great quarterback, especially in this system, is uh, you know the ability to adapt and learn the way he already is showing that he can do. Right. And the experts, Boober Siasin and all the experts out there are saying, this is what happens to rookie quarterback. We yeah. don't have a great game every single game. Um, you don't have a great game every single game when you're a veteran quarterback. How many, no, clung, of course how many not. clunkers did Todd Brady wait, wait, have wait, 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 how many? Career? What, what was the last clunker that Brady had? He didn't score a point. Yeah. This, oh, how about just this past lost weekend? Nine, nothing. How about just this past weekend? Yeah, no, you're absolutely, no, you're absolutely right. That's what I'm saying. Is I mean, it's like, you know, what was that? He, yeah, you know, did you see? Did you see what he did? He, he threw the tablet. He, was, he threw he was the tablet on the bench better than the he tablet. Threw, he threw the tablet better than he threw the football on Sunday night. He said something about he want, wanted to make sure it hit the ground because yeah. all of his, all of his passes like were terrible and hit the ground or something like that. No, he was kind of joking about that's it. The thing is like. Quarterbacks are going to have bad games. All all players are going to have bad games every you know every yeah, once in a while. It's a question of how you respond from it, how you adapt to it. And, you know, we'll see Sunday how Mac adapts to you know the performance against the Colts or you know bounces back from the performance against the Colts. But I mean, Mac has just shown so much more than I think any of us expected how they get to this season. 
uh, it's been it's been really really fun to watch so far, and uh, I can't wait to see what these last three weeks bring because I think that it's going to be uh, I think it's going to be a fun ride here as we get down towards a potential playoff for Virginia. Yeah. If you told me at the beginning of the season that the Patriots, first of all, we're going to make the playoffs, especially the way they started out the season, but we're going to be again yeah. in the position to have to host a playoff game i would thought you were crazy look at where we are and that is it is amazing uh to think about but um what i did want to do and obviously there and well actually before before i get into our little uh little game that we're gonna play here in a second i did i, I would be remiss if i did not speaking of a team that plays at gillette stadium as well for their home games i'd be remiss if i did not uh, shout out the 2021 New England Revolution, who are just coming up. I, I guess one of the most successful seasons in <clears throat> franchise history. I know they, you know, didn't win a title. They kind of came up short there, losing in the first round. But um, the bottom line is this: is that the Revolution and in the regular season, they looked like a bona fide championship contender, week game in yeah. and game out. I mean, and to win. The I forget I'm I'm completely blanking and I apologize. I'm completely blanking on the name of like the regular season championship trophy that they won. I guess it's the supporter shield, I think is what it's called, something like that. Um, but I just I again I'd be remiss, you know, as we're closing out the year here, just if I didn't send them at least a little congratulations on uh on a very successful season and you know being the top dogs in the MLS in the regular season and uh Hopefully, you know, this sets it up for, for more good years to come. Cause I, you know, I'd love to see, you know, I'm not, I'm not the biggest soccer guy. I will freely admit that, but I'd love to see the revolution sort of get back, you know, onto the scene here a little bit. Cause I mean, there were times yeah, in the past sense. years that were, you know, they were, they were going to and contending for championship appearances. So I'd love to see them sort of get back to, to all that. But I just wanted to, you know, again, as we were talking about sort of the year that was, I, I, wanted to sort of give them a little uh congratulations as well so that's sort of i Doug, I don't know if you want to add anything on the rav side no i'm not i i don't uh every once in a while i'll, I'll catch a game here and there but i'm not a same here yeah i'm not a fan i guess maybe i should yeah i mean i i know about them right but yeah absolutely <laughs> i just thought they you know um thought they played really well i mean that's really all i can say i mean yeah i i don't want to i don't want to say something about about them if i don't yeah, un- if i, I don't understand really no they they, they play well them that no, much <laughs> that's all you need to say i mean the well record, hey listen it's another boston another boston sports team that wins so yeah. it's, it's <laughs> add them to the culture add them to, the, the to the culture, culture yeah um but so turning our attention now from 2021 looking ahead a little bit here to 2022 we've got a little uh fun game that we're going to play here in terms of looking ahead to uh, sports in 2022 here just briefly. It actually is sort of uh, uh, based on something that Doug found or, was, or heard on, uh, on, you know, sports radio. I think you was it sports radio. You said the, that you heard it this, was, it was, list? it was late uh, night. So it was, yeah. it was, uh, it wasn't Fox, but it was like, um, remember it was on either. I think it was on WEI. So, WEI and and uh, ninety eight point five both are their late night is always national. Yeah. So from like twelve to six o'clock in the morning when right. the morning show goes on, they go national. So right. typically it's either ESPN, Fox, um, CBS Sports is also on sometimes. So it depends on who has the contract. But it was somebody I heard last night, and he actually. Um, he is like famous for these, these kinds of, it really wasn't a game, but we're going to kind of make yeah. it into a game, but it kinda, wasn't a game. I kind of turned he, it into a game. He, he has these lists that he does, especially toward the end of the year where he just goes over different things and makes lists and, and, and be able to throw them out to people. And then he takes phone calls and stuff like that. So the, the, the thing that he brought up was. Um, six teams or people in sports 
that need to change in the new year. In other words, that you have to make making the new year's resolution to be or get better. Right. So these are people that need to get better in 2022. Yeah. Either teams or people or whatever. Or to think about that they need to do some they need to do something to get to the goal, right. whatever that goal is. So I have six different um, a list of six different um, things here, and what I'm going to do is is um, I, do you want me to give you some hints, or do you want you have to? Yeah, well, yeah I mean, start you, you can like you can kind of like give me sort of like you know sort of the setup of you know like what what sport, whether it's a player or a team, I can kind of just like <laughs> you know sort of to whatever whatever you feel it, whatever how you feel is the best way to sort of go about setting it up for me, and I can you know sort of take okay. Some, some guesses here as to who I uh, gotcha. who I think it may be. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so so this is a team, um, a team that that is a very good team this particular year, this year, but has had some challenges with some other teams. Um, and I'm going to tell you that it is well. Yeah, I, I can kind of well, without telling you who it is, what team it is. I will tell you that it is, I believe they're in the SEC. I believe. Okay. Um, okay. And. and um, I, I think, I think I got it already. Yeah. Go ahead. Tell me. What do you think? Is it Georgia? Yes. It is the Georgia Bulldogs. Is it, is it, is it Alabama's little brother actually is the better, is the better way to describe yes. it at this point. So if you think about this, teams that need to get better in 2022, <laughs> Georgia Bulldogs need to learn, learn how to beat Alabama. How to beat Alabama. <laughs> so so this is, you know, this is And by the way, they may be getting a chance here in early 2022 that's, both that's teams correct. win the semifinals. That's that's correct. That's correct. But but again, this this makes sense. Yeah, you know, oh, this is absolutely. a team that needs to get better. Yeah, that needs to get over the hump. It needs to try to beat Alabama. Makes total sense. Yeah. Okay. Without so, no. the second one is another team. It is a Western Conference team in the NBA. Okay. And I'll just give you this last hint, and you probably will will get it with the last hint, even if you don't watch the NBA. <laughs> uh, you know anything about the NBA? You should know what this is. Um. There's a, a very famous player on this team, and there's a lot of older players on this particular team. Hmm. hmm. I wonder who that could be. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, is it by any possible chance the L.A. Lakers? It is. It definitely is. Okay, so these guys, these guys are too old. I'm sorry, as it just don't play well together. That they do have Russell Westbrook, but again, Russell Westbrook has been playing like crap, um, <laughs> and he can't hold the team. He doesn't have a history of holding teams. He doesn't have a history of of championship teams of being on championship teams. Right. He just doesn't. Um, and and, and that's just not helping. Um, and there's this whole thing about how LeBron is not making excuses and he has a finger point, although. In the last week or so, he's been making excuses and finger pointing. Okay, so so the the issue is is that the LA Lakers really need to get better in twenty. Agreed. Yes. So this next is another NBA team down south. Okay. And in, in, in one in a city that I have never been in, but my parents have visited. Not that you would know this from that, but <laughs> it, it's it's a fun city. It's an absolutely fun city to be in. And there's one player on this team that just needs to get better in, in a certain way. And it is a Southern team. And they're actually, their name is named after a type of bird.
this one actually I'm, I'm like having to think about here for a second um oh wait hold on i think i got i think i have it now i'm not as sure on this one as i was on the first two but well I'm the, gonna the, go. the, the biggest hint is, is that there's a player there's a player on this no, particular team no i'm gonna go out. i'm gonna go with my guy here because i'm pretty sure i've got it is it the new orleans pelicans Yes, it is. It's the New Orleans Pelicans. Good guess. Very good. Very good. It's the New Orleans and Zion Williamson, yeah. who has been hurt. Yeah. And has is had he got a broken foot and the broken foot hasn't healed as well as they wanted to. He just got a shot of I think it was bone marrow or some shot that you can get that 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 healing going right. and makes the healing go faster. Right. Helps with that. Um, so I just wrote down here, he's hurt. He's still hurt. Will he still still be hurt in 2022? <laughs> we don't know. There's a prediction that he won't play this year at all. And that's really going to hold him back uh, from, from being the player that everybody thought he was going to be when he first came into the NBA. He, Zion Williamson, and the New Orleans Pelicans, who just lost a whole bunch of players this past year, <laughs> uh, good players, actually. Um, Zion Williamson, these guys definitely need to get better in 2022. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so this next one is not a team, but it is a team. Wait, no, maybe it's a group of teams. Yeah, maybe it's a group of teams. And this one, the only thing I'm going to say is that this is very near and dear to your heart. Well, if it's very near and dear to my heart, uh, I, I am judging by the tone of your, your remarks there, I'm going to step out on a limb and say that it is uh, Major League Baseball. Yes. It is. They definitely have to have a much better 2022 on they actually need to have, sorry, let me rephrase. They need to have a 2020, 20, 2022, <laughs> yes. uh, I guess what I so, should say. So I just wrote down, I just wrote down one phrase. And the one phrase is get over yourself. And get play together, ball, man. Get together, cut the crap. Yep. Get together, get a contract together that everybody likes and get back on the field. Yeah. Uh, because they Absolutely, Major League Baseball needs to do much better in 2020. Absolutely. And hopefully they can get together and do this the way they're supposed to. Yeah. The next one I have, we've already kind of mentioned the city that this is in. Mm. <clears throat> but it's just a really, really bad team. And they just actually lost a quarterback, a quarterback that everybody knows. They just lost a quarterback um, <clears throat> and lost, meaning he retired this past year. Um, it is a Southern team. We did mention them two two teams ago, two things ago. And Oh, yeah, of <clears throat> course, uh, the, the Saints. Yes, the New Orleans Saints, great city. Who, by the way, yeah. lost – who, by the way, lost – Two of their three quarterbacks to uh, to yes, COVID to just COVID. today. The rookie has to start, and I've yeah. never heard of this rookie. So Ian I don't know Book, yeah, are. from uh, Notre Dame. So um, I wrote down all I wrote down was great city, really, really bad. And yet they beat so the they, Patriots earlier this they, season. I know, but of course, that was with Jameis. That was with yes. Jameis. So, so they have to. They definitely have to get better. In the sure. last one. Last one is is a college team, and this college team is definitely from the south. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure what conference. I should have wrote that down. Did I write that down? Uh, I'm sure once I get it, I'll know exactly what. Conference oh, they have. All right, so so this is this is what it is. They have an eight and four record. They're number 25 in the country. Um, they are, 
well, let's put it this way. They were supposed to, this this will give it away. They're supposed to go to a bowl game, but they have 40 players out with COVID. Oh, Texas AM. Yes, Texas AM definitely Texas has to get from the SEC healthy. conference. Definitely yeah. has to get healthy. Well, because they had yeah, basically they because they had COVID cases, they had injuries in general, and then they had players opting out of the ball games or for the draft or whatever. Thirty eight scholarships. Thirty eight scholarships gone. They just was like, I'm not doing this. So with the thirty eight scholarships plus the forty people, the forty players that that are on the COVID list. They, they have to drop out. Well, it's can, tough because, like, um, except for, like, the college football playoff, I mean, except for the college football playoff, and I hate to say this, I probably would, would get a lot of hate mail for saying this, but except for the, the college football playoff games, the bowl games, they really don't mean a whole lot. I mean, yes, they're an extra game, and, you know, there's some money to the schools and stuff like that, but in the big grand scheme of things, you know, not playing in a bowl game, is not the end of the world. I guess what I'm trying to say. So you know. I, wait a minute. I, wait a minute. I I have a phone call here. Hold on. Hello. Yes. Oh. Yes. Okay. It's 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 a group call. Robbie, this is a group call for everybody that's won a bowl game, and they're not happy with your call. By the way, B. And by the way, I wanted to talk because BC <laughs> is playing a bowl game literally on Monday. Uh, Robbie, R- Robbie did. Robbie really did mean what he said about that. I, we we know how important it is to you. We know how exposure it is. We know how much exposure it is. <clears throat> we know that it's like you know, a national championship is very important. We know that winning the um, the uh, uh, taquito um, uh, bowl is very important. We know that winning the pizza bowl is really important. And winning the fruit bowl is quite important too. So we totally understand that, but. Uh, but you know, Robbie really didn't mean what he said. Okay, thanks. Bye. What what what, what can I say, ladies and gentlemen? It's the uh, every team that won a bowl game. Everybody keeps getting passionate in this network. Like, what is what is happening? I don't know. We're, we're getting more exposure, and I'm not going to go any further with what I just said. Anyway, those are the six teams and people. Hey, I went. Hey, I went six for six. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, you know, you did, did really well. You did really well. Uh, those are the those are the the six teams or people that need to get better in twenty twenty two. Well, we shall see if they will. Shoot. We shall see if they do. Uh, that is for sure. But um, so the last thing that we wanted to do on tonight's episode is we wanted to kind of get into the holiday spirit a little bit here. You know, it's the holiday season, very exciting time of year, as always. And we want to just quickly sort of go over some of our favorite um, holiday movies. I know it's not necessarily sports-related, but it's still, like I said, it's a fun thing to do this time of year. Uh, and like I said, sort of go over some of our favorite holiday classics in the in the movie department. I know our buddy Kyle is not on this episode because this would be something that'd be right up his alley um but doug i guess i, I want to start with you for this because it was also sort of your idea to begin with uh what are what are some of your favorite uh holiday movies i i i kind of grew up on on some of the animated movies um a year a year Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer, obviously, it's it's a great movie. I, I love that movie. It's it's um it's a classic, classic. Um, it just is. The Year Without Santa Claus. That's what I was think, trying to think of. Is one of my favorites. Um, I I love the Home Alone series. Except, I mean, the first two are really really good. Um, after yeah. the second oh, yeah. one, I just kind of go downhill with it. Yeah. Um. And of course, Christmas Vacation is just. If anybody wants to just laugh their butts off um, and just see, um, a, just a very very funny movie, and it doesn't matter what age you are, although it does have some, some voice language in there at times, but <clears throat> I want to see just a really funny movie. Got to see Christmas Vacation. Um, 
a lot of people in there that actually went on to do other movies and TV. So it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> Obviously, starting Beverly D'Angelo and Chevy Chase, and <clears throat> excuse me, a whole host of other people. Um, there's some other ones. Um, Holiday Inn is 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 pretty good. Uh, Wonder, uh, uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Um, classic, absolutely. Yeah, all these really classics. Um, Miracle on Thirty Fourth Street is also a classic. Um, really like that a lot. Um, those are really. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the Grinch. I don't really like the Grinch movies, and I don't like the cartoon Grinch movies. So I really didn't really get into those when I was when I was little. I'm not into Ernest Ernest Christmas or some of these, you know, kind of knockoffs. You know, Weekend at Bernie's Christmas. You know, I mean, it just does. It just doesn't make any sense. Uh, Die Hard Christmas. You know, Die Hard. The first Die Hard is actually listed as a Christmas movie. I, well, it's funny. I, I hear this debated every single year around this time of year. Is Die Hard a Christmas? I've never seen Die Hard, so I, I, I can't. I don't have an opinion one way you or the believe other. You haven't seen. Di Hold on. Hold on. Hello. Oh no. Yes. Oh man. I know. I know. I can't believe he hasn't seen it either. I don't. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's got to go and see it. It's about time he goes and sees it. On. Sorry, it's just Bruce Willis. I, I'm sorry. Just hold on for a second. Yeah. I'll tell him. Oh, really? Okay. All right. I'll tell him. Th thanks, Bruce. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Willis uh, chimed in. He's obviously uh, um, uh, has. Um, we got to get a secure connection, man. <laughs> this is, this is getting coming, to our, <laughs> coming to our Zoom. He has uh, coming to our Zoom and, and did not like the fact that Robbie was talking about it not being a Christmas movie. Um, it is. It, Actually, he was more upset that you didn't see the movie, so I said that you'd go and see it. Um, and he actually told me that he would uh, come to your house and, and watch it with you. Um, uh, but um, he's a little busy right now. But, but um, yeah, it, it is listed as a Christmas movie because it came out during Christmas. I believe it came out during Christmas time. Hmm. Also, in the movie, it's it's Christmas time in the movie. So it kind of makes sense that it, I guess they, they I, would call it. I guess so. Frosty. Frosty the Snowman. Not oh, necessarily yeah. Christmas, more like winter. But if you watch Rudolph, you got to watch Frosty. So that's what yeah. it is. Yeah. And by the way, if you haven't seen Frosty Returns, watch it. Very important. Now, the little drummer boy, I've seen it once and it scared me, so I haven't seen it again. So I don't know about that. That that kind of scares me. But um, I, I think I think probably my favorite animated next to Rudolph. Rudolph is kind of the same, same level. Is a year without Santa Claus. That's definitely okay. my one of my favorites. Okay. Um, well, that's that, that's my list. Robbie, what's your list? Do you have a a, a a bigger list than I am? Yeah, I no, a... no, I really don't. Cause, I mean, I think a lot of the ones that you mentioned were already Robbie on, were on my two list to begin. We're on my list to begin with, but uh, the one movie I, I definitely also want to throw on is Elf uh, with Will Ferrell. I I've always enjoyed that movie around the holidays. Oh, I don't Elf, know. yes, yeah, love that movie. Yeah, great uh, movie. Well, good old I did, Will you Ferrell. know, Robbie. I wasn't going to watch it because I thought it was really stupid. But once I watched it, it was really good. And yeah. I watched it again and again because it's, yeah. really, it's actually very good. Yeah. No, it, it I like really, that movie. No, no, it, no. Elf is really good. I mean, it's been, it's been, I'll be honest, it's been a couple of years since I've seen it, but uh, it, it definitely is a good sort of holiday. If, especially if you're looking for something funny to watch around the holiday season, a funny movie, definitely, definitely. Elf would be on the, the short watch list. Watch Christmas there. Vacation, and then the next movie you see is Elf, or reverse them, it doesn't matter, but I would watch those. Yeah. Um, there's also, I think, uh, uh, and I, again, it's been, it's been a while, so I, but I think Char Charlie Brown Christmas. Uh, yep. uh, definitely. Yep, definitely. Actually, classic. I think it's, I think it's, I want to say it's even before my time, but probably when I was little, when it was made. But it was well, made not, in late sixties, early seventies. That's not think. saying much, but uh, you know. So the <laughs> wait, who else? Hello, well done. Hello, 
Yes. Ah, how you doing? What's going on? Yeah, I know. Robbie just totally my ass. Jeez, people, get off of our Zoom call. Really? We're trying to do a. Okay, we're trying to I do will tell him. Mom. We're trying thanks. to do a professional podcast. That was my mother. That was my mother. People, calling. thank you so much, mom. Thanks, thanks for calling. Uh, we're trying to do a professional podcast. If people keep calling <laughs> in and just you know just bringing us down. Hey, we're bringing we're bringing a new forum. It's a call in show now. All right, so yeah, so uh, anything else, Robbie, on the Christmas end? Uh, I mean, I think you kind of, I think you kind of touched on a lot. Of, I mean, Elf was sort of the big one for me and, and Charlie Brown. Um, I mean, there's other sort of small ones like Santa Claus. Uh, did you like? Tim did Allen. you see Scrooge? No, no. I okay, did not. that's with Bill Murray. That's that's actually that's actually relatively good. Um, it, it's it's good. It's just weird. It's just strange, but. Then again, it's Bill Murray. That doesn't surprise me. But um, no, I mean the, the Home Alone ones uh, definitely were were sure the two at the top of my list, along with Alf. Um, I know you sort of touched on them. It's a Wonderful Life as well as also up there. So yeah, some really classics. Good, so you some really classic. Good classics. I mean, we're some talking really black classics. and white here, people. Got to watch the classic movies too. It's yeah, Wonderful Life. I'm wonder. It's awesome. Absolutely, yeah. It's a little freaky, you know. It freaks you out. Oh a yeah, bit. it gets so, deep. It gets very deep. It some does of get the deep. Subject but, matter. But, 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 just, just, a, just, just, just a classic movie. Yeah, just a classic. You know? It's great, great impression right there. You know, I mean, that's that's. that's I, I, I work on him. <laughs> I work on him. By the way, you also. No, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart just you know talk, yeah. just talks like this. So it's the classic. You got to see the Jimmy Stewart. It's a wonderful life. Wait, hold on, hold on. Say hello. Oh, oh hi Jimmy. Yes. Uh oh you actually you actually you 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 enjoyed that uh that impression by Doug. Oh well I'm I'm sure he'll be happy to hear that. Uh all right. Hey, Merry Christmas to you well. Thanks for calling. Uh Jimmy Stewart, ladies and gentlemen, from uh It's a Wonderful Life. Um and by the way, uh to something I touched on earlier, I again this topic, Campbell Walker has 41 points for the next tonight. Uh, really? Yeah. Uh, they're, who currently trail the Wizards 90 to 86 after three quarters, but he does have 41 points. I think he's okay, the only so, one scoring for the next this game tonight. I think he heard you talking about him and decided to go off to, uh, to go off in spite of Doug. Bro, I, I don't have any problem with Kimball Walker at all. I, all right. I don't have a problem. But you're talking about him I, getting I just, judged. I think you want to show you that he that he, he still got it. So I, I just want to give you some some breaking news. Some more breaking news here. Oh no. Um no no, it's 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 not it's not too bad. Um we just got a call from Jimmy Stewart. Uh what's interesting is is that uh, Jimmy Stewart died in July second, nineteen ninety seven. So um I think there's a problem. <laughs> we have a little we bit have, of a problem. We have we yes. have we have people tapping in the network from all over. What do you mean? I oh, mean, okay. Uh, all right. All right. So so our audience is also, you know, uh, from beyond. <laughs> okay. Well, that's that's pretty much why we started this YouTube uh YouTube uh thing and this this whole sports blitz thing because For, we wanted to get to people to, beyond to infinity um, so, and beyond, you know, it's yeah. all good. So yeah. I knew when I knew when Jimmy Stewart called, I just didn't know exactly when he passed away, but I knew that he passed away, uh, and that was um quite a while back there. <laughs> so a little bit, okay. a little bit. It's all right, yeah, it's okay. We okay. we accept calls from all realms. <laughs> We do not discriminate. <laughs> we do. We take calls from everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it could be Alaska. It could be uh, here in Massachusetts. It could, could be, be heaven. Beyond. Yeah, it could be everywhere. Yeah, it could be yeah, beyond. Yeah, uh, we we just don't have an issue with that at all. Nope, so at all. that's that's excellent. We love all our fans deeply. Yes, um, we do. So. Uh, speaking, well, not speaking of fans, I'm trying to find a segue there, but really there is no segue there from what we were just talking about. But uh, it is time for the final time this calendar year, 2021, to go into one of our favorite portions of our show, and that is our final thoughts. Uh, our final thoughts for the year. Yes, our final <coughs> thoughts for the entire year, the whole year, nothing but the year. Uh, so, Doug, uh, let me toss it on over to you, my friend, for the last time. 
in 2021 and for the 106th time on an episode of the Sports Blitz, what are your final thoughts this evening? Yes, I actually have three final thoughts this evening. A shocker. A total shocker, Betty Crocker. I think anyway. I almost just went to go join uh, Jimmy Stewart there, you know, with how shocked I was. I, uh, 1997, buddy. I don't know. Um, that that's just that that's just classic. I have no idea whether he's alive or not. That's great. Um, anyway, so I have a couple things. I have three things actually. Uh, the first thing is is that I want to congratulate Isaiah Thomas, and not the one that used to play a long time ago for the Detroit Pistons. This is the Isaiah Thomas that was actually on the Celtics. Um, he has uh, put together. Thankfully, he's back in the NBA, a 10-day contract with the Los Angeles Lakers. And actually, his first couple of games, he's actually scored over 20 points each game, um, showing people that he still has it. Um, and I think it's great. Uh, and I congratulate him, and uh, we wish him the best. And I can only hope that he uh, gets out of that contract and we get him on the Celtics because he would be a great bench player. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, is that uh, kind of a historic moment happened. Um, <laughs> I believe it was yesterday with the Boston Celtics. Um, uh, Robbie alluded to it earlier, which is our pal, our buddy, our friend, Joe Johnson is back in the league. Joe Johnson, let me, let me give you some stats. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello? Oh, hi, Joe. Oh my god. Oh, you're 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 wait, hold on. You want Doug to know that while you're flattered, you have plenty of friends you don't want to be our friend. Well that's kind of mean. I mean it's the holiday season. You should be nice. Joe's a nice Joe. guy. I, why would he say that? Yeah, why uh, yeah, Joe, like I, I, I don't understand. Okay. All right. Well, happy holidays to you as well. Um anyway, you go you go on. I'm I'm oh, not thanks. quite sure what just happened there, but Yeah, I don't I don't know either. So anyway, um Joe Johnson, who no relation, I guess by the just way. called. Oh uh, yeah, uh, related to Robbie Johnson. No, I said no relation. I know, and I said related to Robbie Johnson, and I went like this. Yeah, which means no, you're not related to him. I got you. Joe Johnson is forty years old. People, forty years old. Four zero. Now, COVID has hit the NBA like like um, like. Uh, uh, Growing, uh, I, I don't know. It's bad. It's bad. I can't even think of what, what how it relates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're picking these players. And Joe Johnson was actually working out with his son in either Utah or Colorado or somewhere out west. And he got a call from the Celtics to come and join the team on a 10-day contract. So there's a little history with Joe Johnson, and not a lot of people, not a lot of younger people may know who Joe Johnson is. So Joe Johnson got picked um, in the first round, 10th pick overall in 2001 by your Boston Celtics. So he started out there and looks like he's going to end his career there. Exactly 20 years ago, too. Yes, exactly 20 years ago. He is a seven-time All-Star. He play. He has played in twelve hundred and seventy six games. Which, by the way, I think it's twelve hundred and seventy seven now because he played yesterday. Uh, it was twenty years ago as at when, when he got drafted, and he is back. And the crowd was going nuts. Yeah. Now he is called Iso Joe. Um, he was also traded for a bag of basketballs and a goal, a a, a net. Net and 500 players to be named later to the Atlanta Hawks and actually did really, really super well with Atlanta. Um, and it was really the players that we got back, I don't even remember who they are, but it was a terrible trade. So he's back, people. He's back, and it's and it's awesome. And yesterday he actually scored a goal. He scored a fight. He plays hockey too. He scored. <laughs> He's got, scored a goal. Yeah, he plays for the Bruins, actually. I was totally lying. He doesn't play for the NBA. 
<laughs> actually, actually, he played with the Celtics last night and is going to play for the Bruins next week. No, no, stop. Wrong. It's wrong. <laughs> Got off the rails. Excellent. Okay. Joe Johnson Bro, actually plays. The <laughs> Joe Johnson actually plays. Help me. Joe Johnson actually plays for the, <laughs> for the Celtics. He's on a 10 day contract. And he he actually scored a point. Here we go. Well, I think we're I think we're better. It's actually two points. Not <laughs> one. He can score. Maybe, wait a minute. Maybe he kicked a field goal. <laughs> Uh, oh oh man. my god. Is, what a way. What a way to wrap up our final episode of 2021. Oh, that's crazy. Tra- it's not me. It's not no, me. It's, it's, it's totally me. It's, oh, god. it's to it's totally me. It's it is. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, okay. All right, here we come. All right, we're back. I think. Okay, we're good. All right. Anyway, the crowd went nuts. Um, he got two points for the evening, obviously, because that's what it is when you when you, when you score. And um, they just the crowd went nuts. Um, everybody was calling for his, for him to come in because they knew the game was pretty much done against Cleveland yesterday, um, and um, they won the game. He, he said it was a surreal moment. He thought it was awesome. And to, to come back and uh who knows there, there's some rumors out there that he actually may stay on the team which is which is really freaking me out because there's not too many 40 year old players out there so uh but but one thing that we didn't mention one thing we didn't mention robbie about the celtics is maybe they need that veteran presence yeah never know i think it's important a lot of young players over there so my last thought my last final thought, sorry this is taking so long because obviously Joe Johnson plays for the NBA and not for the NFL and not for anybody else. Um, we have, I happen to work for a co-working space and we have a, uh, a guy who just came in and, and this is really important. This is actually uh, a little serious, but a little really good. This is a guy named Wes Woodson. Um, and he's had a lot of anxiety in his life. Um, and he's, has decided he is a professional, um, goes out and, and he's a professional public speaker and has gone through a lot and he has written a book and I have the book right here. I'm going to give you the website, you can order the book. It's really, really, I haven't, I, I, I just read the back cover. I started it, but I haven't, I haven't read the whole thing, but I've seen him on YouTube and he got a YouTube, some of his stuff. It's, it's really very, very cool. Basically talks a lot about anxiety and the book is called, I have anxiety. So what it's by Wes Woodson. You could, there we go. Yep, you you uh, can actually you can see it perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can, you can actually go to his website, uh, web, 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 web. <laughs> sure, here we go. Westwoodson.com. Which I will and, put, uh, by the way, I'll put a link to that in the description. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. And and um, it's basically the unapologetic guide to owning your anxiety. He talks very quickly. He, he talks about people not talking about anxiety at all. We've had professional sports people talk about anxiety um just just during the olympics just this past olympics yeah. we, uh, we had some old biles talk about it that's right how anxious she was and that kind of thing um how to know how to deal with it how to know how to get help when to know when to get help what are the signs telling stories when you tell stories everybody gets the hint everybody gets a little something and that's how he's learned from it but he's also gone through it himself i think this is a tremendous thing that he's doing right now it is a it is a um i guess you, for lack of a better word it's an issue that's going on in the world that i think is 
lacking in people recognizing what it is. People don't talk about it. And this is what he's doing. He's out there talking about it. Um, and it's great. So go see his YouTube stuff. Go on to his website. Check his website out. Again, westwoodson.com. Check it out. You can buy his book there. He's all also got some swag that he's got t-shirts and sweatshirts and hats and stuff like that so he's got some stuff out there um <clears throat> please go out and, and do that because he's really he's really doing some good in the world and he's gonna um you know go into 2022 with with making sure that people understand what anxiety is all about and and trying to help people um get through it so that's mine robbie with my long-winded three different final episodes and are off the rails, off the train, off the Amtrak kind of situation. What is your final thoughts for this last episode of 2021? Yeah, so my final thought has to do with it being the final episode of the calendar year 2021. And I just want to take a moment to thank everybody who has watched us during the last calendar year. Uh, it's been another fun an exciting year of the sports splits. Uh, we have had an amazing time as always filming these episodes. We've had some great guests in during the, the year 2021, and we want to thank them. Um, you know, I want to just thank everybody that tuned in, whether it was one time or whether it was every episode this year. Uh, you know, we just thoroughly appreciate your guys' viewership. And, uh, you know, we guys, we hope that you uh, enjoy these episodes as much as we enjoy making them. And uh, I just cannot wait, uh, you know, to go into 2022 and see what more excitement awaits us here, <clears throat> excuse me, on the sports blitz uh, in the new year. And Doug, I want to say obviously a big thank you to you for another great year of the sports blitz uh again yeah, just a, a lot of great times were had by us including what a perfect way to end it by us just you know classically going off the rails there uh with some some hilarity and i also just wanted to take a moment to wish everybody out there watching a very safe and happy holiday season whatever holiday yep. you might be celebrating wherever with whomever uh, I hope you stay safe. I hope you enjoy the time with your family and friends and, uh, you know, all the great things that come along with the holiday season. And I wish everybody out there a very safe and happy new year as well. And, you know, obviously here's, I don't have a glass or anything, but uh, here's hoping to a great year in 2022 full of so much more excitement and great things, both from, a sports blitz point of view and also just in the world of sports and just in the world in general hopefully we can start to get some more good in the world rather than you know the unfortunate things we've been seeing over you know the past year but also just the past you know and in recent memory i just like i said i just want everybody to have a safe and happy holiday season a safe and happy new year um and that's that's it for us for episodes for the year 2021 <clears throat> absolutely um, we want to thank everybody that supported us yeah. too please yeah. give us comments uh we want to thank obviously simon organist organizing uh, for being our sponsor we want to thank kyle who's been on our show who's helped yeah. us doing doing his doing big his shout out to our what the movies and on a couch talking sports yep. as well definitely he, he also produced our our intro and our outro yes. so yes thanks to kyle for absolutely. being on thanks to all of our guests that we've had on in yeah. 2021 we we really yeah. appreciate it absolutely um, we look um, forward to 2022 going in and and really really doing some really phenomenal shows so absolutely and by the way you can catch all of our shows you know this year next year and from all past years uh we're on youtube we're on facebook we're on twitter so, you know, definitely please, please, please drop us a like, drop us a subscription, tell your friends, comment, ring the bell, do it all. Uh, and most importantly, stay safe out there during this holiday season. And, yes, uh, happy and safe yeah, we can. holiday and happy new year to everybody. Absolutely. And we can't wait to see you guys in 2022 uh, back in ready for more excitement here 
at the sports blitz. So for the final time in 2021, he is Doug. Again, he's up there for me. So I'm going to point up here almost to the ceiling. Uh, I'm Robbie. And uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of the Sports Blitz, episode number 106. And we will see you next time and next year right back here on the Sports Blitz. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys. See you.